Hey guys, it's Cody again. Uh, I am bringing you a video on my Remington Versamax, all right? Uh, I bought this gun before last season. I have now shot it for an entire season and I kind of wanted to let you guys know what I thought about the gun itself. It is definitely hard to find now as it is 2021 uh, after COVID and a Democrat president, but it's even harder than every other gun because Remington has gone bankrupt and they have sold all of their parts. Uh, and so we are still waiting to see what gun manufacturing will be like for Remington in the near future. So let's jump into the Versamax. All right, so here is the case. Now in the case comes your trusty owner's manual for the Remington Versamax. It comes with a lifetime warranty sticker, which I don't know how that will apply now that Remington has sold all their parts. This is a gun lock, which is pretty nice to have. I have not used it yet as I have a safe, but uh, still handy and a nice extra. And here, there's some tools. Um, one of the things that is kind of frustrating when I got this is they throw these tools in here, but they don't really explain what they're for. Turns out this is for adjustments in the back of the gun, that kind of stuff. The crappy thing about the Remington Versamax versus the V3 or the 870 or pretty much every other shotgun that they make is that Remington decided that they needed to make a different choke tube model versus just your classic rem chokes and so they have the Remington Pro Bore. Now the reviews are not very good for the Pro Bore versus the rem chokes themselves and how they screw in and their functionality and everything like that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you already own a Remington 870 and you're thinking, oh, I'll just buy a Versamax and my choke tubes will transfer over, they will not because the rem chokes are not the same as the Remington Pro Bore. So even though the choke tubes might not transfer over, the gun is pretty nice because it actually comes with five choke tubes. And I've never purchased a shotgun that's come with that many choke tubes before, but it comes with a improved cylinder, a modified, a light modified, a, uh, what is this one? This one is the improved modified, and then a full, which is what I have in my shotgun currently. It also comes with this handy shim kit. Now, I have not used this as I am extremely short, and my length of pull is also short. So let's take a look inside of this. Open this up for the first time here. See how this works exactly. Let's pull this open. My, my trusty more knife sits there on the ground. All right, here's your length of pull spacers. It's a pretty big one. These are some smaller ones. Honestly, for myself, I'm five foot six, so using spacers is not doable for me as my length of pull is like just under 14 inches. Okay, and the shortest that this gun gets is 14 inches and we'll get into that a little bit more on the length of pull here in a minute. Let's get into this Remington Versamax, all right? So this gun is made for waterfowl. The Remington Versamax is a waterfowl gun, all right? It is chambered in two and three fourths, three or three and a half, so it covers all of them. It is meant to shoot at ducks and geese. They do not come in a field model. There are no wood stocks made for this gun. They had a limited release one time where they made some wood stocks and those do not exist anymore. So if you're going to buy a Versamax, it's going to come with plastic. I'm not a guy that pays for paint, so I got black. One thing that you'll notice because this is a higher end shotgun, it has rubber overmolded grips. So this rubber is part of it. It doesn't come out. A lot of people are afraid that that rubber will eventually peel up, but it is literally part of the plastic. Same here. And then you have this nice cheek pad. I guess if you are not very good at pulling your shotgun tight into your shoulder, maybe that would help you out a little bit, or maybe it's just more comfortable. I honestly haven't noticed much with that, okay? The rubber over, over molded grips are here too, all the way through the bottom. If you get the Versamax Sportsman model, it does not have the rubber grip. It's a little bit of a cheaper option, right? As I was talking about my length of pull earlier, this is supposed to be a 14 inch length of pull, which is a measurement from the middle of your trigger grouping to the end of your butt pad. It is not actually 14 inches, it is longer than that. At least when I measured it, the issues that I ran into most this season is that the length of pull is a little bit too long for me and I'm short. 
So even at the most stock shortened version of this gun, it is still too long. This pad though is fantastic. This gun is the softest shooting shotgun I have ever shot. Um, part of that is this recoil pad, but the other part of it, which is a plus and a minus, is its weight. This shotgun is super, super heavy. If all you're doing is hunting in blinds and you're not doing a bunch of walking, you don't have to pack in your decoys, not as big of a deal. The weight of the gun does make the recoil less, okay? So it does shoot so soft. It comes with a standard safety. Mine is obviously backwards because I'm left-handed. This gun is empty, so as I'm messing with the safety, you know that it's not going to shoot anything. All right, so let's break this gun down a little bit here. One thing about this is this is super tight and it's gonna take me a second because one thing you'll see here with this gun is that this gets really loose and it's super annoying. So you have to tighten down your cap very tight to get it to not shake so much. If you don't tighten it down real tight, man, that thing just wiggles and wiggles because the way that this stock arm is built, the only connection to the gun is right here. And so this is all loose and it just kind of floats there. Super annoying. The Remington Versamax being a gas operated shotgun is pretty nice. Um, one thing that I've struggled with with my SX4 is the bolt handle falling out. This one does not come out, and usually I have to get pliers to be able to remove it, which I might have to do here in a second. But let's break down this barrel real quick, and let's talk about the vent system and the gas action. So these gas action pistol pistons here, this is what operates the gun, right? So when you fire, the gas release from the combustion is what brings your shell out of the gun, and they say that these pistons are self-cleaning. I have not had that same experience, and one of those tools that you saw in the case is to take those off so that you can clean that up. Kind of a cumbersome design, in my opinion, versus your piston that usually sits over the magazine like you'll see in your Winchester Browning shotguns versus this, this style of port system here. But in comparison to my SX4 and the gas operation of the SX4, I like it better than this one. I shot this last season and it needs pretty regular cleaning. Now, that's not a bad thing, right? I clean my guns pretty regularly anyways, but if you are looking for a gun that you can just use and abuse and beat the crap out of, this is probably not the one because these pistons tend to get gummed up fairly easily and then uh, it becomes more of a single shot. It won't cycle your rounds like it's supposed to. I think it took three or four hunts before it would start doing a single shot. So that's something to keep in mind if you clean your gun a lot, not a big deal. I was running that, that way just to see how long it would take. It just seems to gum up a little bit quicker and doesn't eject shells as well. Everything else in here, if it is a little bit different than uh, like a Browning or a Winchester gun and even the Remington V3 is not set up the same way and what I mean by this remember this is left-handed So imagine that this is on this side on an SX4 or V3 You have your bolt release button and you have your bolt, right? So to bring a shell in you bring this back it brings it out of the magazine into the receiver like so and Then when you release it it brings it into there that is not the case on the Versamax the Versamax is built more like some inertia driven guns where if you do this, it will just keep doing this and it won't cycle a shell in until you bring this back. And remember, this is left handed. You hit this button, bang. That button right there will then discharge a shell into the receiver and then you can slide it because there's not a shell in here. It's gonna catch now up into your barrel. If you shoot till your gun is empty, it will sit like this you put a shell in there and you have to hit this button down here and then press your release and it will go in. So if you're sitting like this and your gun is empty, put two shells in, you still have to push this button and doing so will release a shell into the receiver, pull your bolt back and then you can see, because I don't have a shell in here, it won't do it. That's what feeds it up into the barrel, okay? But you can see that it just, it does this over and over again unless you hit this button down here. 
and that helps lock it open too. It's a little bit different in that regard compared to like your Remington V3 or like uh, a Winchester shotgun or some of the other ones that are more of a simple design where you pull the bolt back and it brings a shell out and you release it and it brings it in or you just hit the button to release it. You don't have to have this, this piece here. The other thing is, you can hear it. This gun clicks because of those pistons, kind of a weird deal. It's a little bit unnerving at first, but it's not the worst thing. All right, so this has got a 28 inch barrel. You can buy a 26 inch barrel if you want. One cool part of this, um, and it wasn't in my case because I took them out, you can replace the tubes to the color that you like. It comes with green, red, and white. I personally like the white, but if you're a green or a red guy, you can put those in. One thing I did not like about this, however, is that the way this is set up, as you can see under here, there's a screw, and that screw is how you take this off. The problem is, there is a lot of part that is not covered by the screw, and the way that they tried to do this is they put a little bump down there that that's supposed to hang on to. My very first hunt, after I had put my white bar in, I caught that on a tree and it pulled it up off of the bar and bent this, so I literally had to re-bend this into place. It could have been better designed so that it's not just some little tiny bump that's holding that back end of that on and then having to tighten that down real tight. The other thing that I took out is the mid-bead. The Remington shotguns, the V3 also comes with the mid-bead. My father-in-law loves his mid-bead. I really don't like it, so I took it out. So uh, that's one thing to consider. If you like mid-beads, it comes with the mid-bead. I felt like it was more distracting when I was trying to pull up on birds, so I ended up taking it out. The trigger is heavy. Okay, I think personally that having a heavy trigger is a good thing. So that way when I'm sitting in my boat blind and I go to pull up, if I bump my gun wrong, it doesn't just fire into my hand, right? I actually have to pull the trigger. I don't want a nice light three pound trigger on a shotgun. I feel like that's dangerous. My personal opinion. I don't have arthritis or anything like that. So. I don't have to experience that per se. Bolt handle, I didn't end up pulling that out, but it does not come out easy, which is a plus, I believe. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Hopefully it will help you make a decision on whether or not you want to buy Remington Versamax, if you can even find them right now. Thank you again for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I really appreciate that. And uh, get ready because this coming fall, we're gonna do some more hunting. And if you haven't checked out any of my hunting videos, I'll throw a link up right here. And uh, thank you again. <laughs>